Hello and a very warm welcome to Ultimate Pool, the Masters Highlight Show. We're looking back at week one of the competition with Shane Thompson, the number one seed in action. He's taking on debutant Callum Kendall in our second match of the competition, but we're going to go straight into the first match of the competition. Clint Hansen taking on Richard Toomey. It was a scrappy start through the first seven frames with Clint edging 4-3 in front, and we're going to join Richard at the table in frame eight. He's brilliant to watch, but you, all, you always kind of think he's going to throw one in which he has done a few times, but sometimes he can blow you away in 20 minutes. I mean, what has he played here? Key ball, key ball. Why is he going anywhere near that middle pocket? All he has to do is make sure he comes past the red. That's all he has to do. I mean, that's criminal. Yeah, and it... I mean, he's going to be kicking himself here because... He could, he could have won the match. I mean, he's, he could have been 7 0 up here, but <laughs> so could Clint. I think he's only cleared once off the break. Yeah, I, th I think, I think there's been one, one break in clearance. I think we've had two, ch both players have had a chance in every single frame bar one. Which you s it, we're so not used to seeing anymore. I mean, once upon a time, maybe, but nowadays we've almost got used to players just turning up, clearing up, and it almost going back and forth like we're at Wimbledon. Yeah, and Clint, he'd love to be able to get on the red at the top, but I don't think he's got the perfect angle for it. Well, he's overran this one as well. He's going to have to play a really good shot here. Well, if he tries to come twice across, I think it's too risky. I think you've just got to bite the bullet here, pot the red and leave the cue ball about four inches from the side cushion. Well, twice twice shot played there. That's a brilliant shot. That could have gone wrong, and he's played a brilliant shot there. Said it require a good shot. That is a very good shot. That's absolutely pin perfect. Couldn't have played that any better. You notice the line he's just picked out there. Potted that slightly on the thin side just to keep him away from that middle pocket as well. Yeah, and that's what you've got to do. you just got to leave yourself a shot. Don't get too close and don't go near the pockets. Oh, oh I can't believe what I'm watching. Oh, my word. I cannot believe what I've just seen. Oh, what a big error there from Clint Janssen. The errors in this match continue. Both players making plenty of them, but that's a big one there from Clint. Should have gone 5-3 in front. Big miss on the eight ball. That cost him the frame, and we're at 4-4. Four, four. Let's jump into the next frame and see if Clint can respond. He's at the table. Because Clint's just going to play this yellow. He doesn't even have to snooker him. Clint could just push this red in front so the eight ball doesn't go and leave the cue ball on the side cushion. Oh, no. What has he played here? He's just left him on the yellow. Is he dangling the bait? Did he mean to do that? I'm not convinced. Well, if he was, Richard's played, I think, quite a nice shot. He's got a little bit of work to do. If that yellow had just drifted on in a couple of millimetres so it went to the bottom right, he's in business, but it doesn't. Yeah, that was a nice shot there. He can still get into this yellow. Just don't hit this too hard. Clever shot. Yeah, lovely. I think you'll have a. Oh, he's going to have a tough eight ball. That much you can say. Well, he's just got to leave an angle on this. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. He cannot miss this yellow ball. Just do not go near that centre pocket. <laughs> Make sure you hit the cushion well before. And that's what he's done. This is harder to miss than it is to pot. Oh, don't say that. Oh Don't my. say that. Did you see how far is it the rail up though? Is it the rail about two foot before the pocket? Big error there from Richard Toomey this time. That's cost him the frame because Clint Janssen came to the table. He made the counter clearance to edge himself back in front. We're going to jump straight into the next frame. Richard breaking off. Oh, golden break. Wow. <laughs> well, you, you knew it was going to happen. What else can we have in this match? We've had everything in the match so far. Oh, goodness me. Richard Toomey goes 5-5 five, five with an eight ball off the break. 
Off a front ball break as well. Ah, oh, brilliant break there from Richard Toomey. Our first golden break of the tournament. There will be plenty more, that is for sure. And that ties the scores up at 5-5. It's been a dramatic match so far, but there's plenty more drama to come. Both players then shared the next two frames to move to 6-6, just two frames away from victory. We're going to jump into the next frame with Clint Janssen at the table. Yeah, that's OK. Oh, those yellows going together, it's not nice. Does it pass? He's been a little bit unfortunate there. I don't think that goes. No, I don't think it does. And what's he got? Well, he can play the yellow off the yellow into the top right-hand corner pocket. That's the only shot for me. Well, he didn't look at it. Not the worst result, has to be said. Yeah, Richard Toomey's got to go and win it here. Yeah, Toomey will be holding back here, you wouldn't think. Through the gap, bring the red out. There you go. And he's, he, he can even bring his other red out if he doesn't thinking go. That, yeah, into the right middle. Got to be careful, though. Yeah, it could be, be on nothing after this. Lovely. That's perfect. Going 7-6, it looks like. Oh, where are we? He's not on the right to the right middle. Well, I think he's on it. He may have to play a touch of a swerve shot. Maybe he's not on it. Yeah, he's fine. Have you seen Richard Toomey take more than five seconds on a shot? You think, oh, sneak. Well, I tell you <laughs> what, he's got to be a little bit careful, you know, because he's going to be close to this next red. He looked quite straight. And you've got to over it this. Whatever you do, don't under it this one. Oh, my word. What is going on? How fast did he play that shot? Why would you not just pot the red and screw back? If you go past the red, you're still on it in the same corner pocket. Answers on a postcard. Clint Tyson then to go on the hill. Three and a half minutes to go. Cube there from Clint. Confident pot. Yeah, that's the first eight ball. He's potted clean in a little while. He still might just have enough to get over the line. Eight ball stays up. It looked like it was tracking towards that corner pocket. Is that the rub that Richard Toomey needs? Wants to go hill, hill with three minutes left. Well, he certainly had a rub because that cue ball was going in off in the top corner pocket. Gonna have to rush. He's got to go for reds. He's no choice. Bullets that one into the heart of the bag. Yeah, and he's, he can bring the other red out if he needs to here, but I think I'd be playing position on it. Is it to bounce? The key with this shot, you have to roll this slowly. Well, he's landed a little bit awkward, but. He's got no choice but to play it, I don't think. Hasn't got a lot of time. Well, the shot he's played there, I cannot believe the very first shot he played. If he was going for the double on that red there, why did he not pot the red in the middle? First shot, which he did, and run forward, and then he could play that red off the yellow, and it opened the pocket up. Oh! oh. Another Cabris. <laughs> this match has got everything. Can you, Adam and Eve? <laughs> I can't. I cannot believe what I'm watching. I, I have never seen anything like this. Oh, and he's missed that by a country mile. And just as Chris Melling said it, Clint Janssen was able to run the clock down to get the victory, seven frames to six. A scrappy match, lots of drama along the way, both players making mistakes and missing chances. 
they normally wouldn't, but that's the way it goes sometimes. And for Clint, it means he moves on and he will play the winner of our second match. The number one seed, Shane Thompson, taking on debutante Callum Kendall. And it was an unbelievable start from Callum. He won the first three frames all off the break. All that Shane did was have one dry break. But Shane, in true number one style, responded with two off the break of his own. And we're going to join him breaking off in the very next frame. Let's have a look at Shane's break. I spoke about before, he hits him so hard. He does normally control that cue ball, and a lot of that is down to his cue action. He delivers that cue in a direct straight line. I mean, look at look at the line where he's elbowing the cue. It's absolutely bang straight. For the second time in the match, he scratches straight in that top right corner pocket. Yeah, and that is a that is a bad break. That's not unlucky. When the cue ball goes straight in without getting kicked, it can never be an unlucky break. I mean, the way that Shane hits them, you know. You're not off by much to be able to make that happen, but you, those are the margins on the break. It's what we were talking about earlier when you were saying you'd much rather have everyone break from the middle, and it becomes a little bit more of a test of quality. Well, the reason that happens is because he hasn't hit the object ball in the centre. Yeah. If you hit the object ball in the centre, that can't happen. And again, Callum's pattern here is really, really good. It's absolutely plumbed the way he's going about these. Well, he's had an OK start on the Challenger Series this year, Callum Kendall, ranked 71. Had a run to the last 16 earlier on in the season. I asked him how he went in Blackpool a few weeks ago, and he said, don't talk about, talk, don't talk to me about that one, I had a stinker. But I've had an all right run, last 16 once. And always capable of going to a last 16, a 288-man runner, like the Challenger Series is. Well, that's a poor shot there from Callum. He could have screwed that cue ball down the table there, and if he'd have gone too far, he's still perfect on the bottom red. This is a tester. I do expect him to get it. Key has hit the middle of the cue ball. Never in doubt. This this is a brilliant, brilliant performance. This is really impressive. Super stuff this from Callum Kendall. 4-2 in front. Looks the business. Well, Callum Kendall just continuing his fine start to this competition. Three off the break to start off with. Sat out the next two frames, but that didn't slow him up. His next opportunity, he made that clearance off the break to go 4-2 in front. Shane, in true style, did respond once again, and he's got another frame off the break. So that makes it the first seven frames all cleared from the break, but it is 4-3 to Callum Kendall. We're going to join it in frame eight right at the start with Shane breaking off. The players, the cues. Shane's on a cut break. Can you believe that? I can after the way he broke his first two. <laughs> and that is my point of, of, of not allowing that cut break. It's like a safety net, isn't it? Yeah, because he's frightened to death of going off in the pocket because he's struggling to control the ball. And control of the cue ball when you break is skill. I imagine you'll, uh, you won't mention that to him later on when you catch up with him after this, uh, after this night. Not too much. If he lands on this red in the middle, oh, well, he's perfect. Just look how he's left the red on the top corner pocket though to get onto the eight ball. Perfect pattern play. He's going to pot this and well, is he, is he playing the plan? Surely he can be playing the plan. Can he not play the red in the middle and run through a couple of inches and play the red in the in the corner, just like that? I'm not, sure, I'm not quite sure what he was looking at there. Yeah, it seemed fairly dotty dot, didn't it? They looked a little bit clustered at, at first glance, but he's got himself in perfect position once, and the next two shots, are, what, three shots are all drop-ins, really. Yeah, and that's not his greatest shot if he's dead straight. Yes, he can pot the ball in the top corner pocket between the yellows. He'd love to be able to stun up the table, because then he cannot possibly fail. Well, he's looking at that line. If he leaves the cue ball exactly where the red is, he's fine. Maybe an inch or two back, it'd be perfect, but this can go wrong. It can go wrong simply because the table slides and bounces a lot. He'd uh, love to be low on this so they could pot in, come up the table. Which is, has he potted the cue ball? He has. Well, he's elected to force it, and you can see what that means to Shane Thompson. He is seething. 
huge error there from the number one seed. Looked like he was going to tie the scores up at 4-4, but that error has allowed Callum back in and he made no mistakes. Took a couple of chances, played a safety shot, but did get the frame on the board to go 5-3 in front. The next two frames were shared, so that moves us up to 6-4. We're going to join it in frame 11 with Callum at the table. Couldn't quite cut it back thin enough. Where's that cue ball? That's OK if you're Shane Thompson. Gets away with one. Yeah, he had to make sure that no matter what, he got that yellow over the pocket. Just made it hard for Shane. It's another big frame in the night. And as this match heads towards the finish line, the heat turned up on the pair. Shane's just going to roll this red in, cannon the eight ball softly, be straight on the red, and he's got nothing to do. Yeah, a lovely finish this from Shane Thompson in the end. It's been a really good game, this proper high standard. Another great response from Shane Thompson, as he has done throughout this match. He gets himself just one behind with that clearance, and he made it all square in the very next frame with another clearance from the break. So we are all square at 6-6. Let's move into frame 13, Callum at the table. Well, is he going for the cut on the yellow in the corner? This is... Where's oh. the cue ball? That's really unlucky. It's really unlucky, but it was so, so risky. It's very, very unfortunate, because that was a brilliant pot. It was so risky. If the yellow had bobbled, the cue ball would have double-kissed it in. And now Shane has got, well, absolute rollings. Does the yellow pass the red into the bottom left-hand corner? I don't think it does. No, he's taking it to the middle. Well, this isn't the pattern that Shane wanted to take. He'd have loved to put the one in the middle and landed here. But you can't see too much going wrong here. He's just going to make sure he doesn't land short. that is perfect. Well, you say it's, I say it's perfect. Is he dead straight? He, he may not be able to do much with the cue ball. This is just one of them where you've got to take your medicine, stop the cue ball dead, and play a tougher eight ball. Well, this for 7-6, this for the lead, a crucial point in the match. That'll do. That will do for Shane Thompson. Oh, look at the eight ball. You couldn't, could you, Shane? It was going close. It was, again. Oh, wow. 
But I mean, look at the split he's left. It's as good as a golden break, really, for Shane yeah. Thompson. They're really, really nice, they are. He's probably going to look to play the red off the red in the centre pocket. It's not easy, easy, but you would expect somebody of Shane's calibre to be clearing up from here. Just look in there where he wants to be so he can play the red off the red in the centre pocket. The only problem you've got is where does the red go that he's knocking the other red off? Because he doesn't want it to go straight into that yellow further down the rail. Well, he's nicely on this. And I'll tell you something, there may be a case for not even playing it off the red. He could even pop this red in the middle, stop the cue ball virtually dead, then play the red in the other middle and flick the yellow away which is what he's playing. He's got to be careful. He doesn't want to hit the red. If he hits the red, he could go safe. But I think he's absolutely perfect just to roll f through and flick the yellow. Ah, oh, lovely. And he knows. He knows now. You have to say, it's a, a great comeback from Shane. Yeah, it's been really impressive. He's been tested here. He's been really tested by Callum Kendall. Who we've both been so impressed with. It's a tough school for Callum. He'll have learned so much from tonight's experience. And he's pushed one of the very best all the very way. But Shane Thompson is through to the group final against Clint Iansen. What a match. What an absolutely fantastic match for both players, it has to be said. But Shane Thompson getting the win showed his class there. He was behind all the way through that match and had to really dig deep, come up with some big clearances, and he managed to do so. But all credit to Callum Kendall. First match on this stage, on the big stage, and he has come up with some really big clearances and he's pushed the number one seed all the way. Big future ahead for Callum, definitely one to keep an eye on, but it is Shane that moves on to tonight's final. So that is where we are going to go now. Shane Thompson taking on Clint Ianson. And I think we need to start right at the very beginning. Clint Ianson breaking off. Are you watching Clint Ianson versus Shane Thompson as we get a golden break to kick us off in this match? Well, the Group A final starts with a bang. Clint Ianson, a little bit of a fist pump, sat back in his chair there, and why not? Well, I think that's the quickest frame we've ever had won. In all of Ultimate Pool, Clint Ianson rather sheepishly gives us a grin. Wow, what a start. Another golden break in this competition. Absolutely fantastic for Clint Ianson. A very fast start. And that very fast start was going to continue because while Shane did have a couple of opportunities in frames two and three, they both went the way of Clint Ianson. He is now 3-0 in front and we're going to join him at the table in frame four. Oh, double kiss wasn't nice. Yeah, and he's left a shot here. Yeah, he has. He left that little angle to go in. He has left a shot. By no means easy. But it's a chance. He has to play it off the red, you think. This could open everything up. And, and it, it has. has. Well, I'll tell you what, Shane Thompson has deserved a little bit of rub there. Because he is relying on it when cannoning into so many balls. Yeah, he he deserved that, that. Played that perfectly. And they couldn't have come out any easier if he'd have tried. And he has been trying all match. It feels like he's not had any rubber the green at all. But a nice little clearance from Shane Thompson. It will feel so good to get on the board.
Shane Thompson on the scoreboard at 3-1. Well, just like he has done all the way through the night, Shane Thompson with a great response to being behind. Excellent, gets himself going, 3-1 behind now. Let's move into the very next frame and join him at the table once again. Is he on the red? Yes. Yeah, he's definitely on the red to the top right-hand corner and just needs to screw back maybe the foot. Oh, Shane Thompson is battling and clawing his way back into this match. Oh, he's not hit it. I don't think he can see the red. The worst thing you can do there is under hit that shot. That is the worst thing you can do. If you over hit that shot by three feet, he's still perfect. What's uh, the phrase that Rick Hill loves? Nothing for short there. Absolutely nothing for it. But can you still play cushion first? Well, I think he can swerve it and pot it and leave a tough eight ball, but it's a real tough eight ball. Yeah, he's had easier ones. How would you like these? You do need to be queuing perfect to pot these. And even if he rolls it towards the pocket and gets the pocket, he's going to leave the yellow in the right-hand corner. It has to go in. What a shot. Oh, what a shot. Thompson, he's queued that a dream. Oh, what a shot there from Shane Thompson. Absolutely fantastic eight ball under huge amounts of pressure. 4 1 down if he misses that ball, but he knocks it in calmly and he gets himself back within one at 3 2. We're going to move on to the very next frame in frame six. Clint Johansson had the first opportunity, potted himself into trouble, and now we join it with Shane Thompson at the table. Played it well. Well, it's a little bit of an easy. I think, unless he's really close now, well, he can't play one cushion, there's your answer. Clint well, played that very quickly, didn't well miss he, it by much. Yeah, and he's got down and just hit that, and there was a shot where he could actually pot the eight ball, and he's not even looked. He just got down and hit it. If he plays the cue ball, three cushions, bottom cushion, side cushion, side cushion, and hits the eight ball, it goes off the yellow in the top left-hand corner. I'm not saying he would have got it, but there's a chance. It was a bit of an impatient shot, that, from Clint Ironson. Very unlike him. Yeah, I think he's just frustrated, obviously. We're missing, uh, missing the, the last red. It was one that you would expect him to get. Yeah, and Shane's not interested in uh, going for this eight ball. And see if he can hit this cushion first. He's got to hit it hard with a bit of screw back. Now he's looking. Now he realises that the eight ball goes off the yellow. And he could have actually played the same shot the shot before. But he'd have had to play it three cushions. He has to screw it with a lot of pace. Shot, Clint Ianson. Wow. Oh, what a brilliant shot there from Clint Ianson. That was absolutely fantastic when he really needed it as well. Yes, yeah, Shane Thompson will be disappointed to leave him a one-cushion escape, but take absolutely nothing away there from Clint Ianson. He came up with a magnificent shot. Looked for all money like he was going to go 3-3 and lose three frames on the drop, but that huge shot means he now has a two-frame advantage at 4-2. And the players then shared the next four frames, so 4-2 became 6-4. And we're going to go straight into frame 11 with Shane Thompson at the table. Yep, he's in big trouble. Does no, can he play it off the red in the corner? Is he going to look at the kick shot? I don't know what he's looking at, but it's not easy, whatever it is. I think he tried to play some kind of double. It's not gone. Well, it's very unlike Shane Thompson, that. Well, I tell you what, it's not the worst result he's ever had. Yeah, he's, he's Clint on a ball here. He's just got the plant. That was missable. I don't know if he's even played it because he's got a four ball snooker. Well, he can play this three cushions, side cushion, bottom cushion, side cushion. Pot it in the middle. He's lined it up straight away. I think this is close. You know where he's aiming there. Some effort. Oh, that's so close. That was close. Yeah, a little bit softer, and that was in, because it just slid a little bit more. Yeah, he picked the line beautifully, didn't he? Straight away. 
Oh, Clint Ironson. Oh, wow. wow. I think it's safe to say Clint Ironson is not the world's biggest fan of this 15 second shot clock. No, as he left it, there is a gap. And, it, and the eight ball goes off the red in the centre pocket. Crisp, clean pot from Shane Thompson. And a little thin one. Well, I think he's got to play this at pace off the red in the middle. It's the right shot, just a stun shot. Well, he's going for the roll. Play what a shot. Well. He was just waiting for the beeps to come in. Oh, oh God, ball. the break. Oh, would you believe it? And Shane Thompson gives it the big in. It's all square, six all. And I said after the first break, I bet we see another one. What a kick that is on the eight ball wow, to go in the middle. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, what drama we are seeing on this night. Another golden break to tie the scores up. But Clint Lianson will be kicking himself. He will have fancied the job of winning that previous frame to go 7-4 in front. But he left Shane another opportunity and Shane was good enough to come up with those couple of big pots to get himself one behind. And then, of course, that golden break ties the scores up. What drama we are seeing. All credit to Clint Lianson, though. He did respond very well in the next frame. A lovely clearance from the break to get himself up to seven frames and on the hill, one frame away from victory. Let's move into the next frame to see if he can complete the job as he has a chance to win. If he can drop it in dead weight, then it becomes a huge favourite to win this match. Nice shot there. He hasn't got the angle to get into it just yet. Well, he's speeding up now. Do you know something? I think he may end up playing the double on the red that's tied up. I think he will now, yeah. He's landed the wrong angle again. He just keeps landing the wrong side, does Clint? See, he's a little bit frustrated. He's he's chasing a little bit here. Yeah, and this table may slide. He may not get the the angle. Well, he's played a good shot there. He's got to play for the double. And that double is the money ball. And he's absolutely perfect. Do you know he could even play the cut on the red if he needed? Now he's that good on that ball. I think the double's a shot for me. Oh, he has played the cut. He's missed it. And he's missed it. Wow. He had to play the double. Oh, just when you thought Clement Hansen was going to clear up to get the victory, another mistake and another twist in this match. Shane Thompson did clear up from that mistake to take us into a deciding frame. So let's get straight into that frame and join it at the start. Clint is breaking off. So Clint Ironson breaking. 7 all, 155 remaining. This will be the last frame of the match. We may still yet go to a shootout. Eight ball stays up. Shane Thompson's coming to the table, folks. Oh, wow. It's broken dry and take a look at the split. Look at the yellows. Can you believe that? What a chance for Shane Thompson to go and win it and take down this group. Yeah, and if he gets across now for the yellow, where the two are, this frame's over. Doesn't want to do much with the cue ball, just roll it in, roll it in and cannon, cannon the red and pot the yellow in the centre pocket. That's the oh. danger. <laughs> that was the danger in playing the shot he just played. Oh, my goodness me, cue ball stays up. Can you believe the shot he's played, though? It, it is absolute madness, the shot he's played. That's the 15-second shot clock for you. But all he's got to do is roll the ball in. The yellow's hanging over the middle. It cannot possibly go wrong. Absolute, you know, brain freeze, I would call it. Well, we call it something else, but... And that is perfect to get on his bad yellow. Is Shane Thompson going to win? with about 10 seconds remaining. Needs to make sure this cue ball lands near the cushion. Oh, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. What a match. It's had a little bit of everything. It's had a little bit of everything. 
But Shane Thompson knows he's had the winning feeling in this venue before. He's got it again, and look what it means to the safe cracker. He gets the victory over Clint Iansen. Oh, what a way for the Knights action to finish. Shane Thompson with an unbelievably good clearance with 11 seconds left on the clock to get the match won and avoid a six red shootout. He books his place in the second stage of the competition and he caught up with Stephen Jameson after play finished. Uh, yeah, obviously it's always, uh, it's always good to come uh, for a group, especially with Clint in the group. Um, felt like I played all right. Uh, had a few cue issues today, but yeah, we battled through and uh, yeah, glad to get a win. What are you thinking when you've got your first semi-final there against Callum Kendall, 20-year-old kid, first real game in front of the big lights, and he zips you up 3-0 to kick you off? You must be thinking, what have I done to deserve this? Yeah, well, Callum's obviously a good player. He plays for the England under-23 side, I think. So uh, I always knew it was going to be a tough game, but just happy to get some chances in the end. And you come up against Clint Irons. I'm guessing you watched that first game, and you must have been thinking what, what, which, which Clint was going to turn up, but the real one didn't give you a real game in the end. Yeah, Clint's never going to play that bad twice in one night. So, um, yeah, it's always going to be a tough game. And like I said, just happy to get some chances at the end. And uh, a little finish at the end was uh, the icing on the cake. What an absolutely brilliant night of drama we have seen on the table. All four players playing their part in a really dramatic night of pool. But it is the number one seed, Shane Thompson, that books his place in the second stage of the competition. If you want to watch the whole night back, you can go on to, on to ultimatepool.tv where you can search for week one of the Masters and you can watch every single second back. And make sure you tune in for week two of the Masters on Wednesday night where you can see Jack Whelan, Lester Gaunt, Gabriel O'Malley and Lee Briscoe in action. I'll be back for a highlight show of week two as well. Make sure you join me for that and I'll see you soon.